start by giving all praises to the Most High, whose true name in Hebrew is Yahweh, in the name of his only begotten Son, whose true name in Hebrew would be Yahweh Shai, and the Holy Spirit, which is the Rakak Wadash, double honors to the elders and apostles, and the Holy Spirit, who taught us his truth, honors to the brethren that's laboring to push the gospel, which their life and freedom to do so, peace and blessings to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel, the true Israelites, according to the scriptures. So we back with another lesson to the power and spirit of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah. This lesson is going to be, remember the help from heaven, number four. Again, remember the help from heaven, number four. And I may title this, um, the cloud, the shadow of the almighty. All right, so you're going to get this first precept. <clears throat> Romans 15 and 4, for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Was everything written aforetime, everything recorded in this book? It was recorded back then for us to learn about today. But to learn about the things that were written, you got to actually read. So you don't just put the book down once you find out you were Israelite. That salvation is only for you. No, that's even even more reason to pick it up so you can start learning. And that when you learn of the things that's recorded in this book, it'll comfort you. Now, and it'll comfort you in these horrible times that we're coming into, the time of the Great Tribulation, Jacob's Trouble, a time of trouble such as never was. Yeah, so you'll be comforted through the scriptures and you will know that you have hope and you will know what to have hope in but to know what to have hope in you got to learn about it you got to actually read all right and this lesson remember the help from heaven is an effort to remember the the, the miracles in the divine intervention that the most high has done before done for us before and to know that he's going to do those same miracles, but even greater, again, in this lifetime, right here in America and throughout the earth. All right. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So remember the things that was written the fourth time because it was written for our learning to give us hope here in the last days. So Deuteronomy 31. Um, this shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind. So, yeah, the Lord said the blessings and the curses written in this book, <clears throat> you know, we're supposed to call them to mind, meaning we're supposed to remember, teach, and that what? We will call these curses and, ble and blessings to mind among all the nations whither Yahweh thy God had driven thee. So this is how we knew that we were Israelites. Not just the ancient pictures, not just the description of what the ancient prophets looked like, but by calling the blessings, but, but more specifically the curses, calling that stuff to mind. Meaning, read them, remember, teach about them. So yeah, um, and again, we don't just call the blessings and the curses to mind. We also need to call to mind the miracles in the divine intervention <clears throat> because those miracles and divine interventions was written aforetime for us to learn about today to give us hope here at the end. So, yeah, call the, call the blessings, the miracles to mind. That's what this lesson is um, going to achieve. <clears throat> so now we're going to hit the book of 2 Maccabees, chapter 7, chapter 15, verse 7. But Maccabees had ever sure confidence that the Lord would help him. In the backstory here, Maccabees, was, him and the other righteous men of our nation, was fighting against the heathen to, to keep the law. Wherefore, he exhorted his people not to fear the coming of the heathen against them. So yeah, Maccabees told the people, don't fear what's coming. But to remember the help which in former times they had received from heaven. So yeah, Maccabees told them to remember the help that we received from heaven aforetime. And now to expect the victory 
and aid which shall come unto them from the Almighty. And how, and how were they able to remember? Because they knew the scriptures to some degree they read. And so comforted them out the law and the prophets. That's the Old Testament. That's where a lot of those uh, miracles and divine interventions uh, took place when our people was delivered from death. And so comforting them out the law and the prophets and withal putting them in mind of the battles that they won afore. He made them more cheerful. That's why we got uh, Revelation 15 of 4. Whatsoever was written afore time was written for our learning. It was written to give us comfort and hope in times of trouble. All right, so now we're going to get into the meat of the lesson. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1. So this is the help. It's the cloud, the shadow of the Almighty. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and passed through the sea. So this lets you know that Corinthians and all of Paul's letters were written to only Israelites because it says how that all our fathers, that don't mean all people on the earth. This would be all the fathers of the people who passed through the sea. When Moses split the sea. But again, how that all our fathers were under the cloud and passed through the sea. This cloud would be a chariot with the world caused a UFO. And we're all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. So pretty much the people followed Moses. So we know that this is dealing with the time of Moses when our, our, our ancestors uh, passed through the sea and were under the cloud. Again, according to the scriptures, would be a chariot, but what the world calls a UFO. Because cloud is just a code word. Let's show that right now. Psalms 104 and 3, who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters, who maketh the clouds his chariot, who walketh upon the wings of the wind. So you can take this word cloud, scratch it out, replace it with chariot. How that all our fathers were under the chariot. Chariot means vehicle. Vehicles can come in many forms. Like here on earth, we got boats, cars, and airplanes. Well, the Lord, he has his own vehicle, the vehicle of the heavens, which come from above, that the world ignorantly calls UFOs, which would be the chariots of the Most High. We read Psalms 68 and 17. But again, that all our fathers of the nation of Israel were under the cloud. And let's go back to that in the time of Moses real quick in Exodus uh, 13, because this cloud was a symbol of mercy. It was a symbol of deliverance. You know, many uh, miracles and divine interventions was done for our people under this cloud, under this chariot, with the world called the UFO. Exodus 13 and 21. And the Lord went before them by day in the pillar of a cloud to lead them the way and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night so it was a cloud by day because it gave them shade because we didn't have a home you know we didn't we, we were pilgrims so this tree with the world called ufo it, it, it provided shade during the day but it says, and by night, a pillar of fire. So it provided, um, it was a source of light in the pitch black wilderness. All right. And it says um, to go by day and night. So this led us day and night through the wilderness for 40 years. All right. Verse 22. He took not away the pillar of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of the fire by night from the the people. So the chariot. This cloud, the world calls UFO, it stayed with us in the wilderness for 40 years. And then again, the pillar of a cloud, where the Psalms 104 and 3 say, who make up the cloud his chariots. So we can take this word cloud and replace it with chariot. And what's up with the pillar of fire? Well, that represents the chariot's ability to light up and give light. 
But when you read Ezekiel, the first chapter, it speaks about chariots of fire or vehicles of fire, pretty much what the world calls UFOs. So this is what led us out of Egypt and in the wilderness for 40 years. And all of our ancestors were under this cloud. Okay, so now when we come to the book of Psalms 91 and 1, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So, yeah, um, the shadow of the Almighty. You, you know, we under the shadow of the Almighty right now. You know, this invisible spiritual protection that nobody can see. But this invisible spiritual protection is going to manifest into this physical world. Because what is the shadow of the Almighty? It's that chariot. It's that cloud. Going back to 1 Corinthians 1 and 10, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud. A cloud does what? It casts a shadow. So we were under that cloud, under that shadow. Back to Psalms 91, we were under the shadow or under the cloud of the Almighty. Because going back to the book of Exodus, it says the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud. So that's the Almighty that was in this cloud. So yeah, we're going to abide under the shadow of the Almighty, literally. This is what led our people out of Egypt. And in the times of Jacob's trouble, which let me get a few precepts real quick. We're going to go to the book of Isaiah chapter 59, verse 19. Why this is so important. Isaiah 59 and 19. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. So the enemy going to come in like a flood. They're going to be like mad men, sparing none, spoiling and destroying everybody, especially those that fear the Lord. Well, when the enemy come in like a flood, we're going to be under the shadow of the Almighty. You know, under that cloud, what the world calls a UFO, which is the chariots of the Most High, like in this picture here. You know, we're going to be under the same cloud that overshadowed Yahweh Shai. Now let's get that real quick. This is Matthew 17 and 4. Then answer Peter and send it to Yahweh Shai, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. So the Lord had Moses and Elijah appear in the New Testament with him. And while he, Peter, yet spake, Behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. So that same chariot um, that led us out of Egypt, it came and overshadowed Yahweh Shah, in which we know we can take this cloud according to the book of Psalms 104 and 3, who make up the cloud his chariot. So we can take this word cloud and replace it with chariot. So a bright chariot, a chariot of fire, overshadowed them so what even Yahweh Shah he abode under under the shadow of the Almighty you know so so we will too so again while he yet speak behold a bright shadow excuse me a bright cloud overshadowed them have you ever seen a bright cloud that you know it's a metaphor a bright cloud overshadowed them and behold a voice out of the cloud out of the chariot which said, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased, hear ye him. So if the Lord is well pleased with us, and he accepts us as sons of the Most High, we're going to abide under this bright cloud as well. We're going to abide under the shadow of the Almighty as well. That's literal. You know, so the time of Jacob's trouble, when the enemy come in like a flood, you know, the pestilence, the sword, the famine, a certain a brothers is literally gonna have UFOs, chariots flying overhead, whether we see them or not. 
And I believe as we get closer to the end, the chariots going to start to reveal themselves more and more like this picture here. And that's what the scriptures say. Then they shall know who are my chosen. So it's going to be very clear, very uh, evident who the Lord is dealing with. All right. So, yeah, um, this is that cloud. This is that shadow of the almighty. We under it right now as in in invisible spiritual form of protection, but it's going to manifest into the physical where we're going to literally be under a cloud, literally under a chariot, being under the shadow of the almighty. That's going to be literal, you know, until the time of our deliverance, our salvation. And again, this will be the same uh, pillar of a cloud, pillar of fire, that bright cloud that overshadowed Yahweh Shah is going to be the same things um, that, that overshadow us, meaning it's going to fly overhead. And that's why when we hit Ecclesiastes 1 to 10, is there anything whereof it may be said, see, this is new. See, so those on the outside, when they see us under the shadow of the Almighty, literally under the cloud, under the chariot, it's going to be new to them. It's going to be strange to them. That's why the Book of Wisdom of Solomon speaks of a strange salvation. It's going to be strange to them who don't know. And they're going to say, see, hey, that's new. We've never seen that before. Yeah, it may be new to them, but it's not new in the earth. Because remember, Yahweh Shah, he was under the shadow, under the cloud of the Almighty. Book of Exodus, you know, we was under that same cloud, under the same shadow of the Most High. That's why Paul, you know, brought it up that all our fathers were under that cloud. So, yeah, it's not nothing new in the earth. It's just going to be new to the people who are not learned. It has been already of old time. So it's already happened before in, in ancient time, which was before us. So going up to verse 9, the thing that have been is that which shall be. And what's the thing that have been in respect to this lesson? It's us passing under the cloud. Us being under the cloud, under the shadow of the almighty so that's a thing of the past it's going to be a thing of the future and not only that it's already happening right now the elect we already under the cloud of the almighty you know i think the book of second kings you know the chariots can reveal themselves to whom they wish so whether we see it or not we under the shadow under the cloud of the almighty already metaphorical and literal and that which is done is that which shall be done. There is no new thing under the sun. So, brothers and sisters, that's part of the elect. One day you're going to look up in the, in the chariot. It's just going to materialize so that we can see it. And don't be surprised. Because it's been there the whole time. Not only now, but many generations ago uh, for this moment. And, and. Again, um, being under the shadow of the Almighty, you know, that represents mercy, protection, and a future deliverance. And many miracles, you know, are going to be done um, with these chariots, you know, such as, you know, the chariots zapping people, the chariots teleporting people from one place to another, which we're going to cover those in future lessons but yep this is the shadow of the almighty that's the cloud that all our fathers pass under in the book of exodus it's gonna happen again so where we can see it but it's already happening now so yeah that's why we brung up second maccabees uh 15 and 7 let's sit it again but maccabees had ever sure confidence that the lord will help him so your confidence, it can't be blind confidence. It has to be rooted in something. Your confidence should be rooted in the scriptures, in the things written aforetime that will give us comfort and hope. Wherefore, he exhorted his people not to fear the coming of the heathen. Because remember, the enemy going to come in like a flood. They're going to surround Jerusalem with armies. The people of Jerusalem, us here in America, 
but to remember the help which in former times they have received from heaven. And what's that help that we received from heaven before? Well, like Paul said, be not ignorant how that our fathers were under the cloud. And then he took not away the pillar of cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. So it was with us day and night. So yeah, remember the help which in former times we have received from heaven. The cloud, the shadow of the Almighty, that's just one of the many forms of help that we're going to receive from heaven. And we should be expecting it here at the end, seeing how close we are. And now to expect the victory and aid which should come unto them from the Almighty. So this the, the, the shadow of the Almighty, that cloud that our fathers passed under, that we under right now, if you're the elect, is going to lead us to the victory. And so comforted them out the law and the prophets. Yeah, we was just in the book of the law and the prophets. We was in Exodus. And with all putting them in mind, meaning to remember of the battles that they won before, you know, with the aid from heaven, he made them more cheerful. So one of this lesson was would cheer somebody up, knowing, you know, it's more with us than that be with them. But this is the shadow of the Almighty. It was that chariot, literal and metaphorical at the same time. All right, so this is help from heaven, number four. Till next time, Shalom.